Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Chris, the online pastor here at Covenant Love Church, and I want to say thanks for tuning in and checking out this video today. Now, if you would like to know whenever we're putting out new content or a new message is up, then you need to subscribe. So if you haven't already, do me a favor, click that subscribe button, and then also turn on the notifications. That way we can let you know when we have new content specifically for you. Now, let's jump right into this video. We've been doing a series now for quite some time entitled Un shakable because the bible tells us and i've gone through much so much of this all of this is up where you can get it on our podcast the series but i've told you that we're entering into the days that jesus talked about that many of those who wrote the word of god paul others jude uh just uh, first and second peter tells us about the days that we're living in Jesus actually warned us in Matthew 24. And in Matthew 20, don't shout. What am I supposed to say? Turn there. Wait until I say turn there. So so Jesus, in Matthew 24, Jesus, the first thing out of his mouth when they said, tell us about when you're going to return. Tell us about what the world's going to look like. The signs, the seasons. What what is that going to look like? The first thing out of his mouth was this, don't let anybody deceive you. And he actually says that in Matthew 24. He says that four times. And the Bible talks about in the last days, coming into the last days, that deception is going to be rampant. And it's not just going to be in the world, it's going to be in the body of Christ. Matter of fact, Jesus gave the parable of the wheat and the tares, the wheat representation of the the, uh, Christian church, and then the tares representing those that are actually in the church, but not real Christians. And so when the angels came, they said, well, what are we going to do with these? And Jesus said, let them grow together. Let them grow together until the harvest. The angels come and reap and bring the body of Christ home before there is a great tribulation. I believe with all my heart, with everything that I see, everything that I I know that is going on in the news, the very things that I look at and I see, I know that the Word of God is true. I know the Word of God has painted for us on the canvas of his word, the very pictures, the very, the, 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 the very substances of what we're going to see in these last days. And we're seeing it. And the very things that Jesus said are happening in multiples around the world. And here's another thing that we need to understand is this is not happening at, at a slow pace. It is happening at an accelerated rate. Beyond anything that I have seen. The Bible says so much. The Apostle Paul wrote so many things about warning us concerning the last days. The Bible says, don't be deceived. Over and over again. In many of the epistles, don't be deceived. Galatians, the sixth chapter, says in verse 9, do not be deceived. He who sows according to the flesh will reap of the flesh. He who sows according to the Spirit of God will reap of the Spirit of God. So that word, that statement, that warning to us is there over and over again. And I've been bringing the scripture in 1 Timothy, the 4th chapter, and 2 Timothy, the 4th chapter, and, and so many other scriptures. And I actually have done review after review after review on this because the Spirit of God says, bring it again. Bring it again. Why would he have me bring it again? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I don't think I've ever had a time in my life that I have been in prayer and seeking God and studying the Word of God that there is an urgency. Forty plus years of ministry and there is an urgency on the inside of me to open your head and get this Word in there and plead and beg and tell you we are living in the last days. 
But we're not supposed to be afraid of it. If anything, we're supposed to be more radical than ever before. Concerning the Word of God, concerning uh, the darkness taking people's lives and, 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 and causing people to come in to deception. And, 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 and we know going into these last days, there's going to be a great battle and war. Matter of fact, the Bible says when the devil knows his time is short. That's what it says in Revelation, the 12th chapter. He says when he knows his time is short, he moves in the earth with a great wrath. What does that mean that he moves with a great wrath? It means that the Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy with a vengeance knowing his time is short. But I look at it on the other side. I look at at the the church knowing that God is wrapping all of this up is not to run around and hide. We need to share the gospel like we have never shared the gospel before in our lives. We need to have an urgency to let our friends and other people know that Jesus Christ is coming back. That that this world is literally going to come, come under the judgment of God. But there is hope. There is deliverance. There is healing. There is life through the one and only Jesus Christ. Jesus Jesus said this. He said in Matthew 24, he said, there are going to be many antichrists. Of course, we look at people and say, well, if somebody denies Jesus, I'm not going to. Listen, when he says antichrist, Remember what the Bible says concerning Christ. Anointed. Anti-anointed. Which there can be people that are anointed. That can operate in the things of God. But fall away. Get deceived. And pull a whole lot of people with them. Just this, just this week, a young pastor who has a mega church up north, mega, mega church, has actually written some good books. But last, last week, it came out in the news media and everywhere that he divorced his wife and he has denounced Jesus Christ and denounced Christianity. And has literally apologized to people for preaching the gospel to them. And I thought to myself, wait a minute. There's got to be something drastically wrong with this. So I went up to hear the last message that he had at his church before he resigned this huge mega church. And come to find out in listening to his terminology and and the verbiage that he was using and, and teaching. I'm sitting there going, I don't think he's born again. I think that he mentally is sense concerning Jesus and God and Christ. But the way I was listening to him, I was like, there's a possibility that... He may not be born again. And then all of a sudden, Spirit of God dropped the scripture on the inside of me over in 1 John. And and when John was writing in, he said, they went out from us. They were with us, but went out from us because they were never a part of us. But listen to me. You've got to know that you know that you know. Who is teaching you and who you're listening to in the Word of God? That's the reason that I put an emphasis in Paul said to Timothy, preach the Word only. See, now that he apologized uh, preaching against homosexuality, which basically, it, it, it's not preaching against homosexuality It's preaching about sinful lifestyles that the Bible says 
is from the kingdom of darkness. And you always hear me say this, it's this, if, if you're heterosexual and you're fornicating, that's sin. If you're a homosexual or a lesbian, that's sin in the Bible. That is a lifestyle that is completely 100% the opposite of the way God created us against the laws of nature. If, if you think that you're transgender, that comes because of what I just said. You think. Where do you think the thought came from? Because if you look in the mirror, you'll know exactly what gender you are. The only way you can, you can get confused about that is right here. And that is, listen to me, that comes from the kingdom of darkness. That is demonic deception. Y'all can go ahead and put this stuff up you've been putting up on my social media and stuff. I delete it. I ain't listening to you. I don't even want to read it. <laughs> So you have to make a decision in this day and time you're li- you're, you, because I'm telling you, the dividing line is drawn. Either you believe the Word of God or you don't believe the Word of God. And by the way, you can find plenty of places to go who's not going to teach you the Word of God. How in, the, how in the world, would somebody with a mega church, how does that deception go? i tell you how it goes. One of the most dangerous things, one of the most dangerous, I believe, distractions or deceptions in the body of Christ for young pastors today or any pastor is church growth. Being motivated by numbers. Being motivated by what can I do to win the approval of the people and have more people coming. God never said, he said, go into all the world and make big churches. Even though there's nothing wrong with that, God said, make disciples. Disciples. Regardless of the size of the church. Because if that's all you're motivated by, and you're motivated by success, you will compromise, you will do everything and whatever it takes to get people to come sit in there in the auditorium. But if you really love them, you will teach the Word of God, the uncompromising truth of God's Word. And you will not be motivated by the fear of man. You will not be motivated by finances. You will not be motivated by anything but knowing that one day you're going to stand before God and you will answer to Him. The Lord keeps saying this to me over and over again in my prayer time. My people are not being told that once they leave this place, they will stand before my judgment seat. That's not the white throne judgment seat. That is for those who have rejected Jesus and will not receive him as Lord and Savior. But you and I as believers, we will stand before God and answer For what we have done in this life with the time and the gifts and the talents that he's given us. What are we doing with our lives? What are we doing for the kingdom of God? Representing, now listen to me, representing the kingdom of God before the whole world. Am I bringing glory and honor to his name or do I deny his name or am I ashamed of his name? Am I scared to tell anybody I'm a Christian? That's a scary place to be. Do y'all realize that? You know why it's a scary place to be? Because the Bible says Jesus said this over in Timothy. He said, if you deny me before people, I'll deny you before the Father. So again, I say, there's a a line being drawn today. 
And honestly, what's happening is true Christianity is going to be coming to the surface. False Christianity, false disciples, they're going to hide. They're, 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 I don't want to have anything to do with this because I, I want people to like me. I want people to accept me. I want people to, to, to embrace me, and I want to be a part of this, and I want to be a part of that. It is time in the church that we, tr- we stop trying to get a God to approve our lifestyle and live according to the lifestyle that he has approved and he wants us to live. We are called to be holy. And that is not a complicated thing because you're talking about purity. You're talking about character. Your, your, your holiness, you're, you're speaking of that I'm not running out here and practicing sin. And as a born-again believer, if I'm out here living in sin and practicing sin, you're in a dangerous position, you're in a dangerous place. There is a reason that the Holy Spirit of the living God is living on the inside of us. God gave us the power through the power, His own Spirit living inside of us to be able to live the life He's called us to live, to bring glory and honor to His name. We can't just add Jesus to our life because we want to go to heaven. That's calling Jesus Savior, but He's not Lord. Jesus bought us with a price. We do not belong to ourselves. He bought us with a price. I belong to Him. He is my Lord. Yes, He's my Savior, but He is my Lord. There is no place in the Bible where it says confess Jesus as Savior. The Bible, all over the Bible, it says those who call upon the name of the Lord, those who confess Jesus as Lord. There's a big difference because when he's Lord, he's Savior. But he's the Lord of my life. In other words, it's not, it's not me living my will and wanting God to bless it. It is me saying every day, not my will, but your will be done, Father. Lead me, guide me, and direct me. Show me your will for my life, Lord. Lord, get glory and honor out of my name. Not saying that we're perfect. We make mistakes. But the key is, am I practicing things that I know that I used to live in, I used to be with, I used to hang with, I used to run with, I used to do when I've been set free and delivered from those things? Am I still involved in them because I want the approval of other people? How would you feel like if God told you to build an ark and it took you a hundred years to do it and nobody approved what you were doing? And every single day you would tell people about God and righteousness and, and you would live your life every single day. Listen to this, for 100 years you'd live your life every single day to please God. And people would ridicule you, laugh at you, mock you, persecute you. Until it started raining. The day the trumpet from heaven sounds and you're called up, you're going to be so glad you did not allow those who were ungodly and wicked and evil and those who denied Jesus and those who mocked you and laughed at you, you're going to be so glad that you are not ashamed of your Christianity. You're going to be so glad that you, that you, you proclaimed Jesus and you told people about Jesus. And you're not ashamed of it. You're not afraid of man. The fear of the Lord motivates you more than anything else. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse 1. Turn there, please. (laughs) 
Paul is telling Timothy. And Paul is writing this to Timothy. This man has gone through troubles and tribulations and persecutions and things that we cannot even equate to. And when he's writing Timothy, who's a young pastor, he's encouraging him. But he's warning him that concerning the last days, and he's speaking prophetically to us by the Holy Spirit. He said, he said, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead by his appearing and his kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ concerning our lives. And today, the way that people are preaching the grace message, that there is no such thing anymore. We will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, it is right there. We will have to answer to Jesus concerning our lives. You, you, you want to know what motivates me as a born-again believer, as a son of God, but also as a pastor? I'm going to stand there before Jesus and give an account of everything that I have preached, everything that I have shared with you. And the Bible says, James says, I will be doubly judged. I don't know about you, but every time I get in this pulpit, my knees can still have fellowship with one another. I don't get up here boastful with all this confidence and putting it together. I get up with the fear of the Lord on the inside of me. That what I teach you and preach to you is the word of God that you will accept it and live off it. So he said, preach the word. Oh, by the way. Did y'all know that there is a peace treaty being brokered right now in Israel with the Palestinians and with others in the Middle East? And it's a good possibility that in 2020, possibly January in 2020, that this thing may come to pass. If it does come to pass, do any of you have any idea where that puts us on the timeline of the countdown? See, I, 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 can't, I, 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 I feel myself getting emotional right now because I, I want to, I want to say to everybody, to those that are lost. They're not serving God. Those that say they're Christians, not serving God. But those who are Christians and serving God. I want to say, it's time to wake up. Young people, do not live for what you're seeing on TV and and other. Don't live for that. I'm telling you, you're going to find yourself in in a bad place. You're going to find yourself in destruction and ruin. And you're going to find yourself in a scary situation. This is a day and a time that you want to tell your relatives. I don't care what they say about you. And and your friends and, and your neighbors and everybody. This is a day and a time that you want to look at people and say, Hey, do you know Jesus as Lord of your life? They may cuss you, they may do other things, but I'm telling you, there are going to be ones that the Holy Spirit, because there is a great harvest coming in these last days. There are going to be people that are say, yes, I, 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 I want to know, but nobody's ever told me. If that, if that comes into being, In other words, here's what Jesus said. That generation will not pass away without seeing me come.
That's the reason I tell you everything is accelerating so fast. When's the last time you've done an inventory on the salvation of your own children? Well, you know, they're so into all these video games and stuff like that. Okay, mom, dad, I think. Who runs the household? They don't need you to be their best friend. They need you to be mom and dad. That's who they need you to be. You're the one that sets the perimeters and you explain to them why you're setting the perimeters. He said this, preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right. Even when it is not, keep your sense of urgency. I got mine. I got mine. And it's building even more than ever before. I'm compelled in prayer. I want to see the law saved. I don't know if you've ever read the book of Revelation. The Bible even says if you read it, you'll be blessed. But when you read it, I don't want anybody going through that. I don't want anybody facing what is coming on this earth as the judgment of God will be poured out. The wrath of God is going to be poured out on this earth. For the first time in my life, I feel like the man that you always see walking around in New York with the sign that everybody makes fun of. The end is near. And yet at the same time, in so many churches and so many places, this is not being taught. It's not being heard. And again, Christians are thinking that I can live any life I want to live, any way I want to do. God will bless me, and there's no inward change. God is more interested in your behavior. God, when you stand before Jesus, he's not going to say, man, look at all the stuff you got with your faith. He's going to talk about the way you live for him in the presence of other people. The things that you did for him in the kingdom of God. Your life that represented him wherever you were. Wherever you work, your vocation or, every, or anything. This is not a day and a time that you want to run out of oil. Like the five foolish virgins. You want to stay on fire for God. This is not a time that you want to sit around and, and, and sit in church, but yet go out in the world and around your friends and all that kind of stuff, and they don't even know you're a Christian. Amen. This is the day and the time that you are going to have to make a stand, or you won't stand at all. You're going to have to be totally 100%, not 95%. Not 99%. You've got to be 100% sold out for Jesus. 100% sold out for Jesus. And if I know that I have sin in my life, this is a day and a time that I've got to come before Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, you know this stuff is in my life. I hate it. I don't want it anymore. I love you more than anything else. I love you more in my spirit, then I love what my flesh desires and wants. I want you more than anything else. I want to bring glory and honor to your name wherever I'm at. No matter what people say, no matter what they do, no matter the way they treat me or talk about me, I want to bring glory and honor to your name. And when people are falling away and going into the world, I'm not going with them. I will plead with them and beg them, don't go there. Don't do that. I have never seen a time in our lives, never in the history Of my salvation have I ever seen where the enemy is attacking our minds like crazy.
doing everything he can to get us away from really serving God and being, being the men and women and the sons and daughters of God that he's called us to be. He said, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome, look what he says to Timothy. This is what we're missing so much in the church of Jesus Christ. Correct those who err in doctrine or behavior. It is amazing. People do not want to be corrected. And that's pride. And that's the most dangerous place in the world to be. They, want to, they don't want to be corrected by the Holy Spirit. They don't want to be corrected by the Word of God. They, they, I want, I'm going to live the life I want to live. And if you don't tell me good things and you don't bless me and, 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 and you, if you're going to correct me and tell me that I need to repent and things like that, then I'll go somewhere else. So he said, correct those who err in doctrine and, and behavior. Warn those who sin. Warn them. Because for some reason... The way that some teachings are going today, it's live like the world. I'll never forget that at Myrtle Beach. There's a very popular nightclub that sits next to the Alabama Theater in North Myrtle Beach. They have this big marquee out front. And in the summertime, this is what they have. Sin on Saturday night, repent on Sunday, join our church services. When Tave and I saw that, I said, this is an example of so much of the church of Jesus Christ today. Correct those who err in doctrine and behavior. Warn those who sin. Let me. Um, let me read. I'm going to jump to a passage of scripture. I'll just turn to it real quickly. Apostle Paul is speaking in 1 Corinthians. The 6th chapter verse 9 and 10. Do you not know. That the unrighteous. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now Paul is telling the Corinthian church. Cor Corinth is heat. It is heat in idolatry. And every kind of immor immorality that you can imagine. Okay. They, they had temples in the middle of Corinth that worship. That you, if you were homosexual, you go there and you worship and then you perform the acts. And then they had the heterosexual temple on the other side that you go and you worship and then you fornicate. That was a part of worship. That's the reason that you see the Apostle Paul writing this to the church the way he's writing this, the way the Holy Spirit is writing this. Because they're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get saved and go to heaven and I'm still going to carry on with some of my stuff. And they're coming out of these lifestyles. And, and listen to me very carefully because when you come out of certain lifestyles, you still, your flesh will still want you to go into those acts. If you, if you get delivered from homosexuality or lesbianism or fornication... There's going to be times that your flesh will make you think that that's the way you still are. But this flesh is not you. This is not your identity. This flesh that we live in is still corrupt. And it must, you must discipline your body. The Bible says, Paul said, I discipline my body. I fight, I discipline my body. At least I become disqualified. He said, I discipline my body. In other words, my body wants to do things and have these impulses and these lusts and things that come up. 
And he said, but I have to take authority over it. I have to discipline it. I can't allow my flesh to make me think that's who I am and this is what I do. Because in this world that we live in and, and, and watching TV and all this kind of stuff, you're going to have all kinds of things. And, and the enemy will always come back to you from lifestyles that you've been delivered from and set free from and make you think, oh, you're still a drug addict. You're still an alcoholic. You're still a fornicator. You're still an adulterer. You're still a homosexual. You're still a lesbian. No. You are not. That's where you are operating in deception and in the kingdom of darkness. But now you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Listen, here's what Paul's saying to me. He said, now you know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you've not been born again, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. But then he says this to him: Do not be deceived. In other words, there was a deception that was moving inside the church of Corinth and, and teachings that, that, hey, it's okay to live like this. There was something, it's a big word, it's called Antoninism. And it came from a guy by the name of Antonia. And he literally was saying this as the church is moving forward. He was saying, okay, by grace we can, you know, we're, we're under the grace of God now. You can live, you can give in to your impulses. You can, you know, whatever comes, you can live that way. Paul is addressing this type of teaching. And he's saying, don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor, nor, nor uh, adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, uh, nor distortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You became a new person in Jesus Christ. You were sanctified. That means you were made holy by God. You were set apart from sin. Sin does not have dominion over you anymore. Lust does not have dominion over you anymore. Your past life does not have dominion over you anymore. Your feelings do not have dominion over you anymore. And when those feelings come and, 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 and man, it, it, it's like, uh, like that. That's where you've got to speak up and say, in the name of Jesus. That is not who I am. He said you were sanctified. If sin doesn't have dominion over you like it says in Romans the 6th chapter, is that, a, is that a lie? It does not have dominion over you. Quit allowing it to have dominion. It does not have dominion over you anymore. You were sanctified. You were justified. That means you were made righteous in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. You need to start saying what God says about you. You need to hear yourself on a daily basis. I am washed, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am a brand new creature. Old things have passed away. No, when something pops up from my old past or old feeling, say, that is not who I am. That is not my identity. That is not where I'm going. That is not what I'm going to do. I am holy. I'm just telling you what God says. I know we're not perfect. I know we make mistakes, but I am declaring. The more you hear yourself say that, I am holy. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Holiness means purity. We don't hear that taught anymore. Is that possible, Pastor? Yes, it is. Hear my echo? Yes, it is. Because I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit of the living God. It is God who lives in me to will and to do his good pleasure. And I'm not talking about self-righteousness. And I'm not talking about being hypocritical. I'm talking about humility. Loving Jesus and doing the things that you do because you love Jesus. Why don't you run with us anymore? Why don't you come party with us? Why don't you cuss like you used to cuss? Why don't, why don't you fornicate like you used to fornicate? Uh, why, don't, why don't you get into... Uh, uh, homosexuality and lesbianism like you were before. Why don't you try it? Everywhere you go, they're going to tell you to try it. In our high schools, they're telling you to try it. Everywhere, they're telling you to try it. And that's where you've got to say, no, nope, that's not me. Amen. What do you mean that's not you? That's not me. I am born again. I am a Christian. Jesus is my Lord. That's not who I am. I'm free. You may have you may have all those gold chains on the outside, but you're chained up on the inside. I am free. I am even when Paul was in prison and he was chained on the outside, he was free and not chained on the inside. He was free. He was free. And that's where you have to look at somebody and say, are you free? Are you free from your bondage? Are you free from your darkness? Are you free from your emptiness? Because if you're living in it, you're empty. It's darkness. Are you free from your guilt? Are you free from your shame? That's what Paul Paul was saying. He said, I'm a free man. I'm a bondservant to Jesus, but I am a free man. I've been set free. I've been delivered. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is the greatest feeling in the world to be free. To sleep without a guilty conscience. To have the peace of God and the joy of the Lord on the inside of me. There's nothing like it in the world. And I've been on both sides. And Jesus is much better. Much, much better. Would you bow your head and close your eyes, please? I want to give you an opportunity today. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you must be born again. That's what Jesus said. You must be born again. When I talk about being born again, I'm talking about joining a church. You must be born again by the Spirit of God. Your spirit man, the real you on the inside of you that will leave this body when you die and go into eternity. It will either go to heaven or it will end up in hell, one or the other. God never created hell for anybody. That was created for the devil and all of the demons. But if I come into partnership with the kingdom of darkness and reject the forgiveness that God has given me his free gift of salvation you can't earn it you just reach out and say I know that without Jesus I'm a sinner I know that nobody has to tell you that but God changed me God give me a new life God give me a brand new life I want to live my life for you. You have a purpose and plan for my life. And if you receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, God will do that. There is no different ways to heaven or to the Father. Other religions won't get you there. Jesus made this statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other window, there is no other door, there is no other gate, there is no other ladder. There is no religion that can get you there. Only thing that can get you in that position is relationship, and that relationship comes through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. I found that out myself. I was 
grew up in church, but I was never born again. Horribly polluted and defiled on the inside, darkness. And I'll never forget that Tuesday night, come this September, that I received Jesus as the Lord of my life. My whole life changed, radically changed. And he can radically change your life if you're willing to surrender your whole life to him. Maybe you're here today and say, Pastor, I I hear what you're saying and I know what the word of God says and I know my life is just not right with God. And today I want to make sure before I leave this place that I'm 100% right with God. Maybe you've backslid and gotten away from God, but I'm going to tell you, if you repent, He will forgive you of your sins and get you right back on track where you need to be. So I'm going to pray. And if you say, Pastor, that's me. I want to be in that prayer. All I want you to do is just raise your hand right where you are and say, Pastor, that's me. I want to be in that prayer. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Anybody else? Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Anyone else? Say, Pastor, that's me. Anyone else? Yes, God bless you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Say, Pastor, that's me. Anybody else before we pray? Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Anyone else before we pray? Getting ready to pray. Anybody else? All right, we're going to pray. All of you that raise your hands, I want you to pray this with us, and we're all going to pray with you. The Bible says that if you confess Jesus as the Lord of your life, or you repent of your sin, if you've known him but gotten away from him, if you repent of your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you. Let's all pray this together. Father God, I thank you today for your love for me. Thank you for sending Jesus, your son who died on the cross and you raised him from the dead and Jesus is alive today I repent of all my sin and I ask your forgiveness in Jesus name and this day before heaven and earth unashamedly I confess Jesus Christ as Lord of my life Thank you, Father, for saving me, delivering me, and setting me free. I declare now, I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. I am brand new, washed, cleansed, sanctified, righteous, holy, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Come on, give, come on, stand up and give God praise if you would. Hey, thanks again for checking out Covenant Love Church here on YouTube. Now, if you'd like to know more about the church or uh, find out what we have going on throughout the week, stay up to date with us. You can always check out our social media sites or you can visit our website and download our app. That way you can stay up to date with what we have going on. Until next time, I'm Pastor Chris. I'll catch you later.